嚟啊，拆嚟啊，喂，咁你做咩？喺个山顶啊，以前有拆嚟啊，嗰啲拆嚟啊，喺个山顶落嚟呢处，我又唔知啊，六七八九九九十九嘅嚟呢处，合声，合声，合声，合声，合声 ，just once in English for us， 啊 ，maybe pretty quick you see， maybe too bad， see what hop saying， big man， bad to stinky whisker， maybe。Fourteen, eleven, thirteen, horse all come. Hey, Jamie, you think maybe Hop Singh's jumping into the shadow? <laughs> it sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Only if a shadow is a ten twenty, then I know. Hot sled. Do you have any help? I'm looking for a man named Ben Cartwright. He's in town to horse auction. I'm horse cart ride. Oh, so he gets you at an auction. <laughs> Is there anything I can do for you, gentlemen? Unless you got twenty-five thousand dollars, you want to let me borrow? Hardly. Then you can't help me. Gaviota, Beecher, Marlowe, Mr. Bogart, as you search the house. Bonds or post your sentries. Just get these animals out of sight, fitted and bedded, and no unneedful shooting. Yo, move it, Mr. Irons. Take my horse, run down good. Mr. Barlow, give me some bath water heat. That yalla do your cooking? He's a Chinese, not a yalla. You stay out of house. Hop Singh. Okay, Hop Singh is yellow. Hop Singh cook. But I only cook when Mr. Horse tell me to cook. Hoss, 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 you're right. You, if you got a name. Shanklin. Right, hurry. Boy, you quit poking at that dead man. Go fetch your daddy. He's not dead. Tell him to bring that money. Tell him no law men and no posses. That's the first thing my pa's gonna see to. He do when we burn this place to the chimneys, boy. House, barns, horses, cattle, and that bull horse with him. Jamie. Miss Hoss. Listen to me. I need a doctor and I need him quick. Pa, I'll be here in a minute, Hoss. Jamie. Pa can't help me and they can't hurt me. Get me a doctor quick. Hoss, I just can't leave you here alone laying flat on your back with those men in there. Jamie, don't you see while you're. Keeping me company, I'm dying. Ride for a doctor, boy, quick, quick. I 
know, it's a positive. I must have been shot. Queen to Mr. Asquith, five for the late Mr. Yost, and a tray full of hearts to the big winner, young Cartwheel. Cartwright, not Cartwheel. Well, I'll tell you something, Mary Elizabeth. If you had as many cartwheels as he has in the Virginia City Trust and Savings... The old flannel mouth. And a quick ace of diamonds to Mr. Jackass Sayers of San Francisco. A pair of red aces to match his eyeballs. And to our gambler of profession, if not distinction, a ten of clubs. Three teens. You got mouth enough on you to talk the sun past the rooster. But you don't call the hands. Three tens indeed, Mr. Yost, and a jack of diamonds to the dealer. Very possible. Tens bet five. One on each ten. In that case, I fold. Why, Joe Cartwright, you folded four hearts. I saw your whole card. Oh, well, you got four hearts? Well, you had to meet Pete. You got the king high. And don't tell anybody what the whole card is, will you? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sure. It's all right. It's time for me to go home anyway. You gotta give us a chance to get it back, Joe. You gotta give us a chance to get it back. Oh, I just remembered. Dr. Martin's in Carson City for the week. You better get Doc Ingram. Tell him it's a matter of life or death and to get out there as quickly as you can. Yes, sir. And you stay in town. Wait there till I get back. What about Joe? Joe's the last person we need out there. He'll either get gunshot or become a hostage. Get! But, Pa, Pa, I just gotta tell Joe! Got it. Ah! Look at I found up in the attic. You know, there's more loot up there than horses can carry. Shut up, Beecher, and help us load. Hold it. Well, here comes that man that's gonna give us all that money. Oh! Yeah, I'm Ben Cartwright. Where's my son? Either a bull horse? Yes! Amigo! Bull horse dead. <laughs> oh. Doc Ingham's on his way. He's dug a few out of me. Hurts fierce. Yeah. Wish there was something I could give you. Whiskey. I can't risk it, Oz. Whiskey could kill you. I'm beginning to wish something would. Caught right. He's shooting Mr. Oz. My name is Shanklin. You shot my boys. Yeah. And that one, that horse, he should be dead by now. He's not. That's real quality beef. What do you want? I got to have that money. My son is hurt bad. You may need a surgeon. Dr. Ingram will be here any time now. I ain't going to stand in anybody's way after we conclude our financial business. $25,000. In gold or silver or both. And coins? And none, none of your Yankee paper. It's a whole lot easier to carry around. 1,250 golden double eagles weighs out about 50, 60 pounds. That's not much. That's worth its weight in gold anywhere. I, I don't know if the banks have that many coins around. Banks got friends. San Francisco. I'll wait. All night if need be. Give us time to draw up a note. Note? What note? Promissory. Long-term loan from you to us. Shanklin and Company, CSA Limited. CS? You touched in your head or what? The letters stand for Confederate States of America. They used to. 
As long as Shanklin and company rides, the Confederacy endures, but it's an expensive enterprise. I don't want your note. I didn't ask you if you wanted it. Won't make you any less a thief. Your General Sherman left his promissory notes all through Georgia. It didn't make him less a thief either, but it did make him seem a great deal more legal. That was war. It still is. Lee lost the war. You didn't. Lee lost a battle. And I lost nothing. Now you best go get that money. Not until my son is tended to. You tell your bank to drop a long-term note, 99 years, 3% per annum interest. And I sign for the CSAS treasurer. And maybe we draw up a joint venture bond issue, if you like. Now, if the doctor needs to operate on him, you'll allow that. Why not? What good's a dead hostage? You'll have me as a hostage once I get back here with the money. If you get back, you and a banker might decide that bull horse ain't worth no $25,000. Shanklin, let's get this thing straight right now. Whether my son lives or dies, if we get out of here, you and me alive, I'll spend every breath and penny running you down to the ground and stomping you into it. You're firing off that mouth like a nine-pound cannon, I'll tell you. You keep it up, I'll get Mr. Ritter in here, cut your tongue out. Send you to town with a note pinned to your vest and that dead yellow strapped to your back. You start out on me, you have to kill me. Then I'll kill you. And I'll kill them all. Dr. Iyala and that bull horse first. Now, you light out of here. Mr. Cartwright. Get. Remember, first sign of lawman or posse, bull horse gets the same. So is Mr. Bogardus. He's going to take you all the way to the ranch. Good Lord, Ben, I, I don't want to get mixed up with any outlaws. There's no time to talk about this. Horse is hurt bad. I don't know how bad. I don't know if he can be helped. Well, in that case, I really should operate at the office. He can't be moved. Who says he can't be moved? Shanklin. Shanklin? And I agree with him. It'd kill him. But, Ben, I, I need my instruments. Everything's in my office. You need your office? I'll bring it to you. Now get going. All right, hang on. We're going in. Come on, boy. bright red bull horse. Way brighter than my red blood. Come in, doctor. Man here with a hole in an artery. It looks like a laceration of the femoral artery. I might save him, but that right leg will have to come off first thing. You can do for 
me and Barroso just stay clear away from the punters. You expect him to take the money and just ride out? He might. It ain't likely. There's any chance that he might. It's a lot more likely that he'll just bring Gunny all down or take you with him as hostages. Ben, I can't stand by and do nothing. Let him get away scot-free. I can't do it. You can and you will. Don't even think of moving in my direction. Shankler said he'd kill Hoss at the first sight of a lone man, and he will make no mistake about it. I still can't see the harm of blocking the main roads north and south. I said don't move there. Do you understand? Ben, that's a lot of money to let him get away with. He's not going to get away with a thing, not the least part of what he's done. So help me God. Ben. Bennett, what's some doing? A thousand double eagles and the rest in silver. Oh, good. Thank you very much, Mr. Woodlock. Boys, let's put this up. Ben, are you sure there's nothing I can do? No. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Oh, uh, Clem, there, there is one thing. Uh, if you see Jamie and Joe, tell them, uh... Tell them what? Tell them they're under arrest. Arrest? Yes, and then lock them up. For what? For safekeeping. Yeah. He ain't got much color, has he? Back in Missouri, we buried better looking carcasses than him. Well, Doc, you're gonna get at it, or ain't you? Well, I don't mind telling you. If I don't take this leg off pretty soon, the gangrene could kill him. And if I do, the shock to his system could easily do the same. Doctor, I already told you the man has a hole in an artery. Yes, sir. The femoral artery is tangentially lacerated. Unless I've misjudged, but I do think that the bullet grazed it. Why don't you fix that? Then the leg might just up and fix itself. I mean, if a man pokes a hole in his windpipe, you don't amputate his head. Well, sir, your femoral artery is nothing to trifle with. Now, let me explain it. As I see it, a blood clot has closed the laceration, or at least most of it. Unfortunately, it's also closed the flow of blood to the leg. So the leg is dying little by little. Now, if you go in there, if you open up the laceration, well, this man could die from loss of blood. Before you even find enough unshredded artery to tie off a butt end, let alone repair it. It's seldom done successfully in hospitals, never mind here. Well, you have to take out the blood clot whether you want to amputate the leg or not, right? Of course. Well, then you lose no ground by trying to repair the artery first. But the gangrene could spread to the adjacent areas above the hip. It could kill the man while I'm tinkering with the artery. Well, you haven't even got real laudable pus or outright gangrene in that leg yet. You put some blood into it, and for all you know, you might stop that gangrene before it gets legal possession of his big toe. Are you telling me to repair the artery first? It amounts to that. You might also try to get the bullet out while you're in there. And if the gangrene does spread, if it kills him, if he should die from loss of blood, you take the responsibility. No, I won't, but you will and right between the eyes. Seen Joe Cartwright? I just came on. I haven't seen him. Are you sure?
Now, how did he know his call was coming? You got a medical instrument here, Doctor. Oh, good, good. Now we can get on with it. How is he? Well, we're going to have to work fast. Put that over there, please. I got some more supplies in the wagon. You're coming off quiet. Both your sentries are sent to sleep. Mr. Bogardus, you double those sentries, and then you deal with Gaviota and Vandersey. Deal how? You shoot them. Yo! Beecher, Ritter, you other two, come and be. Mr. Brackney, a former detail, help, help unload the medical supplies from that wagon. Come on, you stay here and assist the doctor. Good to see you back, Mr. Cartwright. Shut up, yell, and help clear off this table. You don't have to bother counting it, it's all there. I wouldn't want to delay your departure. I can unload the wagon myself. There's no hurry. Need time to count the money. Sign the note. I didn't bother with the note. You best learn to follow orders. You ride with me. What does that mean, ride with you? Yeah, I'm going to take you all the way to Mexico with me. Sort of keep the law at a respectful distance. No lawmen behind me. Oh, not yet, but there will be. Not if you ride out now. Oh, I wouldn't think of leaving you behind, Cartwright. You're not ready to go yet, are you? Not before Bull Horse does. That's right. Well, there you are. Well, I'll leave together, one way or another. You plan on taking Horse with you? Well, what I want with that dead man? He isn't dead. Oh, but he will be by the time we ride out. Meaning you plan to kill him? Meaning I already have. Okay, where do you want this? Just put it down somewhere and move out of the way. Move! Shankton, my son survives this operation. You ride out of here without harming the doctor or saying I'll ride out with you. Only if... Oh, you ride out with me, you know, if butts are always... Only if us survives. You want to ride to Mexico belly down on a pack saddle, that's fine with me. And if Horse lives and gets back to his feet, he'll come looking for you. He gonna get back on his feet again when we're all in hell under six feet of ice. And you'll get there first, Shanklin. Because you'll take the shortcut to the hangman's trap door. The Yankees hang me, they gotta use a sour apple tree. Oh, don't give me any of your crazy talk, Shanklin. You're no war hero, you're nothing but a cheap, common, murdering thief. If I was, I'd have shot the lot of you before this. You first. You probably intend to do that anyway. Get rid of the witnesses. You don't think too good, Cartwright. That yell is a witness of how I shot in self-defense. The doctor is a witness of my merciful compassion, trying to save the life of a man who tried to take mine. Now, why'd I kill them? And why did not I kill that other boy of yours after he pulled on me? Because since yellers don't count in courts of law, that boy is the only real witness, and likely the only Cartwright with guts enough to bear witness. I'm gonna leave him behind, alive and kicking. Maybe. We can stay clear. Had me a boy like him once in Missouri. Red leg shot him off the ridge pole of the house. The official report of the Yankee militia said he died from the fall, and not the bullet in his head. Just like later, they said my wife died after she was attacked by wolves. Yes, Lord. Wearing Union blue uniforms. I'm about to administer the ether. I may need some help holding him down once it starts getting to him. We put it to him, Doctor. Mr. Grange, Mr. Brackney, help hold the patient down. Breathe deep, horse. Deep as you can now. Breathe. Deep as you can. Breathe. Breathe. Breathe deep now. Breathe. Mr. Shanklin, what was that? Mr. Irons, you kindly remove the ether mask. The patient has stopped breathing. Heart failure, I'm afraid. Doctor failure, more like. You ever hear artificial respiration? 
For pumping water out of people who've been drowning, yes, but... Same thing for drunk people. He's not drunk. Well, ether is just a higher form of alcohol. You could say he's drunk. Dead drunk. Oh, ben, you do this, will you? I don't hear any heartbeat. Can't hear anything at all. Mr. Horst knows where go. Oh, I thought we'd lost him. The heartbeat is coming up strong now. Thank God. Thank Bull Horst. I think uh, it best we wait a few moments before we proceed. I don't want his shirt tailor Dr. Hornin in. All right. I'm gonna raise you $500. Win, lose, or draw, I leave by midnight, and that's it. I'm tired. You might be well before midnight, Junior. Flat broke. Depending on what I got for a hole cover. Mm -hmm. It feels so fierce. I am gonna raise you 200 you're fake and you already looked at your whole card. Never did, you old jackass. Seven hundred dollars? You, you see that spade flush? You think you're gonna bluff? Psst, Listen psst, here, psst, I... Psst, psst. Do yourself a favor, stay out of this one. I think I'll, uh, I think I'll fall. It's a good idea. Excuse me, Mr. McLaughlin, have you seen Joe Cartwright? Yep, he's upstairs counting all my money. Thank you. I'm gonna see that too. And I'm gonna raise you three more. I gotta talk to Joe Carvey. She can't be disturbed. Wait a minute. Joe, it's us. He's been gunned down. My pot. I had aces full. <laughs> God, right, tell you, yell to make some coffee and keep boiling lots of water till I tell him to stop. Expect some rather bad hemorrhaging. You gotta tie off us north and south of the wound. What's that? You. You presume to tell me how to do this operation? Mr. Irons was a surgeon's assistant in the Georgia Volunteers. He's seen some few things tied off in his time. With all due respect to you, sir, and to uh, Mr. Irons' wartime doctoring, I am the doctor here, and I say. Stop saying and do. And you better do right. If we're talking about what's right, I still maintain that arterial repair is the wrong way to go at it. It's the right way. You just do what Mr. Iron says. Now, will you please keep out of this? I'm your hostage, I'm not horse. Doctor, please. That's a fact, and I don't care if Bull Horse lives or dies. That's another fact, but I do believe in doing some things right. As far as I'm concerned, if Doc Ingram says it's right, it's right. Now, please go ahead. Do it your way. Mr. Grange. You go and fetch Mr. Ritter, tell him to come in here and kindly cut out Mr. Cartwright's tongue. Get. 
You got a few talking minutes, Cartwright. Why don't you ask the doctor about his way? I don't have to. I trust his yeah. way. Uh, let, let me uh, tell you. Uh, <clears throat> you see, there is gangrene in the leg. And there's no blood getting to it. Now, if I don't act fast, that gangrene could climb up the leg into the trunk and kill Hoss. Yes, but while I'm trying to put North and South together, he could up and die. Well, will you please stop talking and get to it? But, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Shanklin, will I go ahead and amputate the leg? Now, will you stop? Amputate. That's what the man said. You can't do that to us. You're twenty dollars over, Cartwright. You can't. Ben, I'm not equal to any um, blood vessel surgery. I've no, never done any. Well, you've got to try. I'm afraid I'm going to kill Hoss. Don't you realize that if you amputate, you kill him anyway? You can't afford any more ether, Doctor. You best work on him before he wakes up. All right. All right. Put this up together, Doc. Mr. Hines, do you kindly administer three fingers of whiskey to Dr. Ingram from my bottle? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I could have operated while you're drinking. You best do likewise, Cartwright, because the drunker you are, the neater Mr. Ritter's gonna be when he comes in here and cut your tongue out. Hey, Ritter. Shanklin wants to see you. Shut up and listen. Ryder, he's coming in. You're hearing things. Shut up. I must have lookouts. Yeah, I heard him. Give me three or four seconds and send Cochise to the flats, all right? Right. Right. Yes. There's one horse. I'll pick him up. Shots? Yeah, but I was trying to open up this here safe. Forget the safe. We got what we came for. You go find Mr. Bogartis. Tell him I want to see him double quick. Get your gear together, cart right the way I heard it. Them two shots are fired in anger. Some of your boys whooping it up, maybe. Not likely. You go get your gear. Duck. Duck, you all right? Making an incision five or six inches long, not as straight as it should be, but there we are. Now you, you see it's parallel with the femoral artery. I mean, um, above the wound. And now I'm going to deepen it. Go down to the uh, artery level. Lay it open. Be very careful not to puncture the Oh, Lord, I wouldn't want to do that. Mr. Irons, pull him away. What? What? What's... A scalpel, Mr. Irons. A clean scalpel, Mr. Irons. What we have here, doctor, is an iliac incision and an imprecise one but it can be lengthened and made to serve with perhaps a transverse incision to the point of the hematoma. Now, what I have in mind is lifting the entire section of the affected artery up 
and out of the opening, keeping the hematoma intact and unpunctured, and then we can commence repairing the arterial wall that's intact, and as if we can find any. I had uh, considerable success with this procedure for all traumatic aneurysms during the war in Georgia. to some very adverse battlefield conditions. Sponge. I learned more about surgery in three years of war than in all the years of my private practice. Probe. Now, as you see, doctor, we won't be able to lift the artery at any point. The patient is very heavily muscled and sinewy. But if you bend closer and look under the hematoma itself, you see that the lower part of the artery is still intact? Yes, yes. So that means that some blood is still getting through to the leg. Now, here's what we want to do. Mr. Irons, you will pinch the north end of the artery using the thumb and forefinger, and doctor, you will pinch off the south end, and I will try to drain and trim the hematoma save as much of the arterial wall as I possibly can and, and stitch it as tightly as I can. What about the bullet? Well, that's lodged in the pelvic cavity. It's loose as a baby's tooth. We'll get to it later, Mr. Cartwright. You come over here and handle the instruments. Now, gentlemen, here's where I want you to take hold of the artery. Here and here. Let's go, Cartwright, scalpel. Scissors, Mr. Cartwright. All right, gentlemen. Pinch it. Tighter. Grange, where did you come from? I've been out looking all over for you. Let me tie these two up, gag them in the stall. Georgia born and reared, Mr. Cartwright. I went to medical school in Washington, D.C. Then I moved to Missouri. Start my private practice, because that's where my new bride lived, wanted to remain. I practiced about five or six years, till Jefferson Davis commissioned my granduncle Tully as colonel of the 35th Georgia. I returned home to be that outfit's first surgeon. Mr. Irons is my helper. Three years of blood and men dying. Scissors. All right, gentlemen. Mr. Irons, doctor, let go and... See what we have got. We have got us a repaired artery. A very fine piece of surgery. Let's hey, go after that bullet now. Would you go get us some more towels, scalpel? I came back to Missouri. The 
Get my wounds healed. See my wife and son. I healed slow. Couldn't doctor myself with it. Forceps. There it is. And then, the local Yankees started in on us. The Red Legs? Oh, and the Jayhawkers, and the federal militia. You were just a southerner, let alone a Confederate officer home on sick leave. And you had to fight. It was kill or be killed. I was away with Quantrill when they killed my wife and my son. Dr. Ingram, you reach down there and pull that tighter together. But I tell you, I was bitter and worse, but still, it was war. And women and children, they get killed in war, and you just got to expect that. And then they added insult to injury. All right, hold it. You don't wish. I know your boy. Who's the other one? My other son, Joseph. You're in a surgery. Both horses on the table. He's alive, and the prognosis is good. He's got a fair chance at old age. But if my hand slips, he's going to be dead in two minutes. You better drop them weapons. Do it, Joseph. What's he talking about? Do it. Mr. Hines, you pick up that ordinance. Now, as I was saying, Mr. Cartwright, April 8th, 1865, the Missouri State Constitution was adopted. You give me scissors, Mr. Cartwright? That Constitution stipulated that no former Confederate officer, soldier, or sympathizer would thenceforth be permitted to practice a profession in the state of Missouri. It was in the nature of that final indignity that I left home and the state of Missouri the very next day, taking the Confederacy with me. Young one's got something to say. Say it, boy. Well, he's the one that shot Haas. I saw him. Yes, I did. I did, because I knew he'd knuckle me cold in less than a minute. Now, I'm operating to show the good doctor here just exactly what a Confederate surgeon can do. Mr. Irons, that shotgun you took away from that boy, have you ever seen that before? Yes, sir. Grange carried it out of here. Yes, I thought so. We heard some shots before you come in here. You kill any of my men? Well, Mr. Grange was a little overly fond of the bottle, and that's no great loss. But Mr. Ritter is a very fast draw. Did you kill him, boy? I killed him. That's a capital crime, Brother Joseph. We're going to have to settle that. He did it out of self-defense. Your man fired first. Doctor, you mind taking over the last few sutures here? I'd appreciate it. Certainly. Uh, Mr. Cartwright here. I'm going to assist you. Mr. Irons, give me that handgun you took away from Brother Joe. What are you going to do? I'm going to retaliate. Brother Joe killed Mr. Ritter, and I'm going to kill Brother Joe. I killed him in self-defense. The other fellow was going to kill him. It's my man, Mr. Cartwright. An accident of war. War you brought here. You got work to do. Mr. Irons, you see that he does it. Now, you, you got the money you came for. Why don't you just take it right out and leave us alone? Doctor, don't forget them drains. You need at least two. Well, you've shown that you, you, that you have a shred of human decency. I'm going to leave the young one alive, just like I promised, to bear witness. There's your gun. Try for it. Joseph, no! You don't, you're dead, and so is your father. You got three seconds, Brother Joseph. with 
those trains in, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. He's going to be fine. Too bad I ain't got a Confederate surgeon to save me. <laughs> <laughs>